service here in Seymour Street and you're especially welcome if you're joining us from home online. I'm very sorry to announce um, the death of uh, Mrs Marjorie McRae. Um, Marjorie died yesterday and um, we just ask you to remember um, her, her sons Stephen, Rodney and Ken and the entire McRae, service, uh, McRae family um, in your thoughts and prayers this week. Um, there are no funeral arrangements as yet. Um, Lunch and Club meets again this Wednesday, and that's at the usual time of 12.30. And then on Wednesday evening, our um, Bible study continues, um, looking at uh, First Peter. Um, that's going to be at 8pm, and again, that's going to be on Zoom, and the joining details are on the church email. Also, the Ladies' Bible Study continues, and that's on Thursday morning, and that's at 10am. Um, that's a switch of time, so the new time is 10am. Um, we'd also ask you to continue um, when you're out shopping to think about uh, um, contributing to the Lisbon Food Bank um, in preparation for Christmas. They've asked us to um, supply uh, cranberry sauce or stuffing mix, so if you just if you remember that um, when you're out, uh, out shopping. Um, we've recently uh, received um, monies back through Gift Aid. Um, a grand total of £33,133.76 has been received which is a um, huge amount of money and uh, makes up a substantial amount of our, our church income. Thank you for all those people who do um, give by gift aid and if you don't already and, and would qualify to do that, um, we'd ask you to con consider doing that. I'd really like to pay tribute to um, Harold and Joan Baird for all their really hard work in the preparation of this work and so that we receive this money, so we thank them. Um, on Friday night, our new uh, youth club started and it was really well attended. We had 17. Um, I think um, more kids are hoping to come next week, but we would just ask um, children if you are coming just to uh, book online through Eventbrite. And if you are interested in helping out in any way of that, if you could speak to Ashley. And then just finally, just remind people that there will be coffee after the service, and I think just due to the weather, it'll probably be in the hall downstairs. So hand over the curtains. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Good morning, everyone. Um, we're going to sing a few songs together, as you, if you didn't get already guess, if it's handed over to us, of course it's going to be singing. Um, so if you want to stand with us, we're going to do a few songs, and um, I'm just going to pray as we stand together. Um, Lord, uh, just a challenge this morning for us is, no matter how hard life gets and how complicated life can be, just always remind us that you are with us, Lord. Um, like the ever mentioned story of footprints in the sand, Lord, you never leave us and you never forsake us, and you're walking alongside us each and every step of the way, Lord. Um, so yeah, just as we sing these songs this morning, Lord, just help us remind us remind us of that that you are right beside us, uh, and then you're just helping us carry us on our heavy journeys. 
Amen.
For their groups. We'll see you guys see you later. Have a great day. And everybody else can have a seat. series, this new series based around Andy Stanley's book entitled The Principle of the Path and hopefully it'll come up somewhere along the way there. David had to be someplace else this morning so I'm covering for him today uh, and I want to reiterate that what was said last week uh, in that service that we're using Andy Stanley's book and much of the context this morning uh, as was last week and the weeks to come will also be based around the writings, stories and ideas found in the principle of the path. Even more so than that, fortunately for me, and I know it's fortunate to be your not, but certainly fortunately for me, David had already prepared uh, his talk for this morning and very kindly has given it to me uh, as well. So not only are you getting Andy Stanley's thoughts, but you're getting David's turtle sermon as well. So my concern is that by the time I make my way through Andy Stanley, David Turtle's ideas, and add a few of my own, you're not going to have a clue what any of us are talking about, and you'll either be on the path or you'll fall clean off and into a ditch. <laughs> so I want to just pray this morning that the Holy Spirit, and ask the Holy Spirit to do the talking and the leading and the challenging this morning. So let's pray together. Uh, God, in 
the name of Jesus, we ask that Holy Spirit, you will come now and minister to your people here in this place. Will you come and open our hearts and our minds to your leading and direction? God, will you use my foolishness of speaking and by your spirit inspire and challenge and rebuke and anoint as it is needed. Bless all who fall under this word this morning. Help us to hear your voice. Help us not to be distracted or to nod off. Help us to apply your message deep into our hearts. And may we always strive to live for you in all we do. So move among us now, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. So let me remind you what this principle is all about. Direction, not intention, determines our destination. Let me repeat that because I think it's actually, I think it's a really, really very wise statement. Direction, not intention. And for me, that kind of is the key, not intention. Direction, not intention, determines our destination. And then similar, I suppose, to last week when Dave was talking about our trip to Peebles that we did uh, earlier in the, in the year. If I get up in the morning and decide to head to Portrush and get onto the M1 and head down to Skillen, I will have a great deal of difficulty dipping my toes in the ocean at the West Strand in any sort of decent time. My intention, of course, is good. My direction leaves a lot to be desired. And we thought about this last week in relation to not only our driving skills and where we're going, but when it comes to our marriages, to our relationships, to our money, our st moral standards, our jobs, our education. When it comes to all the other issues of life, it seems that this is what Andy Stanley reflects or refers to as often the case in his book, a disconnect between the paths we choose and the destination we hope to arrive at. We want to end up here, but we get on a path that takes us there. And when we get to there, we quite often say, oh goodness, what on earth happened? Oh God, where were you? Why am I here? Where am I? And God says, as well as others around us say, well, you're there because that's the path that you chose. That's where the path that you went on leads. And that is always the destination you're going to arrive at. We talked about how this disconnect affects us, about how this idea of somehow it's all going to work out, has, that idea has invaded our thinking. We have begun to realise, or begin to believe, sorry, that if our intentions are good, somehow we're going to magically end up where we want to be. So this week we're picking up a very interesting and particularly hard question found in this book. And I'm wondering to myself when I think about it, did that David boy choose this and did give me this hard question? How do you know which path to be on? That's the question. How do you know which path to be on? Nobody wants to choose a path in their 20s and then find out in their 30s it was the wrong path. Nobody wants to wake up in their 50s and find out they were in the wrong path in their 30s. There are so many things in life that you only get one chance to do. The last thing we want to do is to get on a road that will lead us in the totally opposite direction to where, as the people of God, a direction which God wants us to be going in life, never mind where our own hopes and dreams take us. And sometimes, well in fact, more often than enough, choosing the right path is and can be extremely difficult. So how do you know? How do you know? How do you know that marrying that fella, for example, that you're engaged to, how do you know it's going to get you to where you ought to be? Because marriage is a path. How do you know that moving in with that woman or that fella is going to take you a certain direction? Because that is also a path too. These decisions and others always take us somewhere. We all have to make major life decisions and they're not just incidences. They're not just events. 
They are all connected to our whole life. They are paths. This whole series that we're looking at, this book, is rooted in, in the book of Proverbs. So we're in Proverbs again this week, but today we're only looking at one verse. And that's Proverbs 27, verse 12. And this is what it says. The prudent see danger and take refuge, but the simple keep going and suffer for it. So the prudent see danger and take refuge, but the simple keep going and suffer for it. Here's the very same verse in the message translation. And it says, a prudent person sees trouble coming and ducks. A simpleton walks in blindly and is clobbered. So, let's think about a situation you may have found yourself in. You're out for coffee with your friend or your mate. You're chatting about all that's going on in the world. You talk about other people that you both know. You catch up on all the gossip, you know, that sort of situation. And then you start to hear them tell you about what's going on in their lives. A life that, as the conversation develops, appears to be perhaps not as you had previously thought. A life that is actually upside down. I wonder if you've ever been in that situation. Have you ever been in that coffee shop? I'm sure you have, because we've all got friends. And maybe your friend, maybe the issue was their, their, their work, or their, maybe their marriage, or maybe their finances. Or perhaps you discovered that in desperation they flicked right on their phone app for some dating agency. And lo and behold, it developed into one major bad relationship decision. And all the time, in your mind, it's going round and round. As you listen to your friend, as they're talking, you're thinking to yourself, as your friend's chatting, you're thinking, me, what were you thinking of as the situation unravels? As you listen to them, you begin to think to yourself, did you not see that coming? As they tell you their story, oftentimes through pain and tears, you think, how come you never seen this coming? Eventually, and so often, if you interrupt when they're explaining something and ask some questions, you find that, in a way, actually, the truth be told, they saw it coming themselves. You know, conversations can go kind of, you know, whenever, whenever she said such and such, did you not think that was, that was a bit serious? Or what happened? Did you not think that was a bit suspicious? And as I said, if you stop your friend and ask them questions, you'll find that most of the time they will say, well, yes, I suppose I did see it coming. But, there's always a but. So, what does Proverbs say? Proverbs says, the prudent see danger and take refuge, the simple keep going and they suffer for it. So let's look at this verse for a moment. What? have we in these few words? We have two people, two possible responses, two outcomes, and one situation, because both of them see danger. So let's look at the prudent person first. The prudent person in the book of Proverbs is a wise person. In fact, those two words are used interchangeably. The wise person is the person who knows that life is connected. There's a relationship between yesterday, today, and tomorrow. There's cause and effect. They know that in life, if you're on at point A and you move to point B, it's very likely that you're going to move to point C. The wise person lives their life asking questions. For example, you know, in the light of my past experiences, when I, when I think about what happened the last time, you know, the last time I, I was in that place or the last time she did that thing, in the light of my future hopes and dreams, you know, where I want to end up, basically, what's the best thing, what's the wise thing? And in some cases, what's the right thing to do? Because the wise person, the prudent person, understands that life is connected. Then let's take a peek at the simple person. And none of us like this phrase, do we, really? The simple person or the naive person as it is translated in some versions of the Bible, they think life is disconnected. The naive person thinks that today is all about today. 
And tomorrow is about tomorrow, and it will all look after itself. And things are not really connected. How they think is, well, just because it happened the last time four times and I turned up exactly the same happened, doesn't mean it's going to happen the next time that I turn up. Somehow the simple person doesn't connect the dots about the future. The naive person thinks that somehow it's going to all just work out. Somehow they think that they can have intention A, but they go down path B, and somehow path B is going to take them back to intention A. They just don't put things together. So let's go back to the, to the prudent. The prudent see danger and take refuge. That's what it says in Proverbs. You see, what the prudent do when they look down the road, they say, oh, there's danger coming, or I see a problem. What the prudent do is they take appropriate action. They do something. They respond to the information. They see that something needs to be done, and they do it. They take refuge, and they do something. And the poor out simple, what do they do? Gosh, well, they just keep on going. And there have been times, you know, when we've all been guilty of that. We reckon things will just work out. We know deep down that we ought to do something about that thing in our lives, that thing that we all keep secret, but we don't actually do anything about it. We can see where certain situations are going to take us, but we think we can handle it, and we don't bother doing anything about it. We know we should probably stop, but we don't, we can't, we want to, but we can't. We genuinely think we can handle it, whatever it might be. None of us like or want to be characterised as simple or naive, and yet oftentimes it's the most intelligent who do some of the strangest things. Proverbs says the simple keep going, and when you're on a path, remember it always leads somewhere. And here's what the Bible says. The scriptures tell us when you see a problem approaching, the problem that's going to come your way in the future if you continue on this path, and your response is, I probably should quit, I probably should change, but you don't do it. The Bible says, when you or I do that, we are simple, we are naive. And the Bible says that we are simple or naive because when we see the need to act, but don't do anything, we are somehow thinking that we are going to override or overrule or trick the path principle. We think we're going to continue on a path that will, ne that will never arrive where the path leads. Prudency, danger, and they do something. The simple just keep, they, they just feel convicted and say, yes, you're right, you're right, absolutely. I know I should, I should, I know that. They admit and they acknowledge, but they don't do anything. They just keep going. So we have two people, two responses, but we see also that there are two outcomes. Firstly, the prudency danger and take refuge. They take refuge. They don't wait until they're at the edge. They don't stop. You know, they stop long before that point. They make changes before they get there. And as a result, they can feel a bit foolish, but they avoid pain. They avoid suffering. They avoid unnecessary problems because the prudent see danger and take refuge. That's the outcome. However, Solomon tells us specifically what the outcome of the simple or the naive is. The simple keep going and suffer for it. They suffer for it. At the end of the process, when they get to the end of the road, they suffer. And when you talk to suffering people, suffering people who suffer not because of something that has come their way, which no one could have anticipated or avoided, not the things that come which no one can explain or reason out, but rather those who suffer because they have brought trouble on themselves. Very often people 
In those circumstances, I don't, I don't exclude myself from that. People will say or think, well, how could God let that happen? How could God let that happen to me? And the answer is, well, because God works through principles. If you jump off something, you hit the ground. And I have a really nice slide somewhere that somebody's going to flick onto because I really like this one. If you jump off something, you hit the ground. Don't blame God. It's the principle of gravity. He put it in place. He warned us. We learn this as a child. The simple keep going and they suffer for it. And when you suffer for it, you're so angry with God. And you're so frustrated with life. And there it is. So frustrated with life. And how could this happen to me? And what is God playing at? And God's saying, well... I gave you this principle thousands of years ago, and here's why. The simple keep going and suffer for it. You see, there are points in life beyond which there is no return. Whether it's in the realm of morality, relationships, marriage, whatever it is. There are points at which we reach a place and all our options are bad, actually. Suddenly life begins to unravel. And you think, if I could go back 10 years, I'd have better options. If I could go back five years, I could have gotten off that path with all those consequences. But there are points when if we continue down certain roads, we don't have good options. We suffer for it. Why? Because we kept going. Think about it. When you're 62 years of age, and retirement is looming, unless you're in this country and it takes you to work you're 72, but anyway, uh, that isn't the stage to start saving for your old age. It doesn't matter how much we pray or plan or scheme then. If we get to that place, we have missed opportunity. We kept going and we're thinking, I wish I could go back, but you can't. The same is when we get to a place where we've been, become addicted to something. Or we spend too much time on the internet. Or we spend too much money. Money we don't have and we max out our cards. Or we spend too much time with another man or another woman. And you say, yeah, 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 you're probably right. And, and you didn't do anything and you just kept going and now you're suffering. And it sounds harsh. But that's what we have done. If that's what we have done, it's our fault. It's not that God loves us less. God couldn't love us more. But the frustration and the pain is because we try to break a principle. You don't break a principle, you just break yourself against a principle. <clears throat> you end up where our paths lead. And that wasn't our intention, that wasn't our hope or our dream. Direction determines destination. The prudency, danger and take refuge, they do something. The simple and naive, they, keep, they know better, they've been warned, but they just keep going on and they suffer for it. So, very briefly, just to sum this up, there are four words that Andy Stanley associates with this principle. Uh, they're not steps as such, they're just, they just kind of go hand in hand. The first one, action. You have to do something. You have to end that relationship or make that difficult phone call. You have to cancel your internet. You have to move, whatever it is, the prudency danger. They don't just pray and think about and contemplate. When they see danger, they take refuge. They do something. So that's number one. Number two, sacrifice. The principle requires sacrifice. You have to give something up. And we're not very good at that, really, are we? But if we take this principle seriously, we're going to have to sacrifice something. Maybe it's our reputation, maybe it's some money, maybe it's a friendship. But if we decide, when we see danger, we're going to act. It's almost, it will almost always require sacrifice. And then there's embarrassment. Flip, we hate embarrassment, don't we? Change can be embarrassing. It can be an embarrassing thing to do. We're going to have to make decisions that other people around us are not really going to understand. 
and there will be, of course, an element of embarrassment. And then finally, there's relief. Because one day, we'll breathe a sigh of relief. And you may look on this, back on this day and this time as a time when you got off that path, that path that was going to lead to destruction in some area of your life. You'll breathe a sigh of relief. So we have action, sacrifice, there may be a bit of embarrassment, but then that day, that day when we will breathe a sigh of relief. Or, or, it's much easier just to keep going and one day suffer for it. In closing, in the book, Andy Stanley uses this verse to form a prayer. It's a prayer that we would be wise to adopt for our own use as we journey on our path. It says, Lord, give me wisdom to see trouble long before it gets here and give me the wisdom to know what to do and the courage to do it. Let's say that together. Lord, give me wisdom to see trouble long before it gets here and give me the wisdom to know what to do and the courage to do it. Amen. Curtis is going to lead us. Um, just as we sing this song, um, you can stay seated, you can stand up and sing. It's just, this is your time to kind of reflect with God and kind of just think about how God is working in your life and how, sorry, I'm trying to put a cap on at the same time, can't, I can't multitask. <laughs> um, and just how God is working in your life and how God, just as we kind of talked about earlier, how God is in, in our lives and, what, you know, and is with us along the way, um, even when we feel like we're, we're going solo sometimes, uh, just remember that God is there with us.
let's all stand together for the final song. <laughs> ourselves in relation to the past we're currently on. Help us to be wise in our decisions, mindful that our direction determines our destination. Help us to live to your glory in all we do. This morning, God, we're conscious of those who are sad today. We pray that, Lord, in your mercy, you will be their comforter. And remember all who are struggling, whatever life has thrown at them. Help us, Lord, to be the people if you want us to be, help us to know that you're here with us every step of the way as we journey on. Bless us now in Jesus' name. And all the people of the Lord said, Amen. Amen. Don't forget there's tea after 
Thank you.